Right, I have the pleasure of announcing Paolo Melchiore. I did, I practiced. <laughs> uh, maps with Geo Django, Post GIS, and Leaflet. Thank you. So, uh, hello everyone, and thanks for having me. Uh, I'm here to talk to you about maps. I'm not a JS expert, but I'm talking about maps from the point of view of a Django developer. It's snowing outside, so I want to start with this picture I took in a beautiful place in Europe in the summer. Who can tell me which country this photo was taken? Someone? No one. Okay. <laughs> I'll tell you. It's Italy, and to be more specific, I took this photo in a natural reserve in Abruzzo, the region where uh, I live and work. But first, a little bit about myself and what this picture has in common with maps. I'm Paolo Melchiore, I'm Italian, and I, as you can see, I like the sea. I took this photo in the very same place of the previous one. I always like uh, taking photos uh, in my travels. I'm a computer science engineer, and my thesis was about free software. I discovered free software when I was at university. The first free software I started using and contributing was a photo organizer. I was able to share photo with my friend, like a static web album. I could also uh, upload a scanned image of a map and put manually some photo in specific point on that map. It was my first web map. A bit basic, but it worked. And I forgot to mention that all of this happened in the pre-Google map era, so long time ago. After university, I started using Python in my first job. We developed a website uh, with Plon. Plon is a content management system with, uh, built on top of Zoop and um, on top of its uh, ZODB, the Object Oriented Databases. Then I needed to store data in a relational database like Postgres and I started searching for a Python web framework with support for Postgres. I found that the best choice for me was Django. In my resources about Django, I read its documentation, and I, f I tried also the Geo Django tutorial. And in the meantime, I started working remotely as a Django developer. And the last few years, uh, I've been working at 20Tab as a senior developer. So 20Tab is a software company based in Rome with some remote worker. As a company, we attend and support some local meetups and conferences like this one. In 20Tab, we use agile and lean methods and grow up marketing approach. The main part of our work is uh, software de development with technology like Python, Django, React.js, and MicroWhiskey. Some months ago, another customer asked to us to add a dynamic map on their website because they wanted to show their data on the map. So I started studying again the Geo Django documentation to find a simple way to integrate a web map in a Django project. OK, now. Our goal is clear, and let's see the main topic of this talk. We are talking about maps, but uh, we are also going to, to travel all around Europe. We will start from Abruzzo, the region where I come from, and we will speak about Gio Django. Then we'll go to Rome, the city where 20 dub is based, and we will see all the Postgres features. We'll go south to Sicily, the region where uh, our front-end colleague Carmelo come from to speak about leaflet.js. After that, we will come here to Copenhagen to see a basic web map built from scratch. And at the end, we will go to the south of France, where our customer is located to see a new case of a web map in a Django project already deployed in production. So let's talk about web map. A web map in general is um, 
something that allows users to view and search data in a special way. And it's common to add one in your project. Usually, a web map is delivered by a geographic information system, and it can be static or dynamic. You can interact with it, or maybe you can only view it. The map can use raster or vector tiles to represent the surface. Usually, the data is stored in a special database, and a web map will use JavaScript library to show data on your web page. So we already talked about GeoDjango, but what's GeoDjango? GeoDjango is a country model that transforms Django into a geographic web framework. It pro provides new special field types that you can use on your model. GeoDjango adds special queries to the Django ORM. For example, you can find a particular point in an area. GeoDjango extends the Django admins with support for editing geometry fields. And finally, GeoDjango provides now four special database backends. As you can imagine, we needed a backend to manage all this geographical uh, data, and our choice was Postgres, because we already use Postgres in all our projects. But besides that, Postgres is also the most complete GeoDjango backend. It is an extension of Postgres, and it integrates special data in it. Postgres adds new special data types and specific indexes that speed up the special function you can use uh, in your data. Leaflet.js is one of the most used JavaScript libraries for web maps. It's free software, and it's both desktop and mobile friendly. It's very light. It weighs uh, less than 40 kilobytes of gzipped JavaScript. It has a very good documentation that you can read online, and it's also simple to use, and it performs very well. So now we are going to see an example of a map integrated in a Django project. We will use a basic Django project that everyone maybe know. Uh, I took it from the official documentation. We are seeing an extract from a blog application in the making query section of the documentation. I read it a lot of time, and I think also you read it a lot of time. We have a blog model. Very simple. Another model for authors. And then we have an entry model. The entry model has an headline. It's connected to a blog. And it's related to one or more authors. So after installing all the required system packages, uh, the first step to add the web map in the blog project is to configure the setting file. So we need only to add the Gear Django module in the installed apps. Then we have to update the default database engine and use Postgres instead of Postgres. But to use Postgres, it's necessary to create its extension on your Postgres database. To do that, we can simply generate an empty migration file from the blog application. Then we can use the create extension function from the Postgres contrib module, as you can see here. OK, now we are working on models. After the Postgres activation, we can add a point field in our entry model to store a valid location. I omitted the other fields we, we saw before. I also added a let long property to the model because it's useful to have a coordinates of our location in a list form when you work with uh, leaflet.js. 
We can add a location to our entry using the admin. Um, so we are going to use a different class, as usual. It's the OpenStreetMap Geo admin, imported from um, GeoJango. We have defined uh, an admin section of our entry model, as you, you can see here. We have set only the default values for latitude, longitude, and for the default zoom level. OK, after doing that, a very nice map will show up in your admin page. It's very useful, and you can use it to edit your map and also to edit an area or going around, zooming, and so on. OK, now we have added a lot of points in our project using the admin. So when we have a lot of entry with points, we can show them in our web map page. And to do that, we are going to use a generic class-based view from Django. We need a list view with a filter that returns only entries having a valid point. And then we can connect this view to our URL path. Finally, to show the map, uh, we need a simple HTML page with basic text. We have to link the leaflet stylesheet and the leaflet JavaScript file to the either section. The other mandatory step is to add a div with a, a specific ID. And if you want, you can specify some style rules like widths or heights, add some titles, and so on. We have an empty script, a JavaScript section, but we'll see in a bit. So here you can see the JavaScript code that completes our page and draw our map. We only have to define our map by setting the default latitude and longitude at the zoom level. This is the point for Copenhagen. Then we have, we have to add a tile layer, and here we are using the one from OpenStreetMap. As a final step, we cycle on all the entries that we received from the view, and we create a marker on the map for each of them. We've used the, the entry string representation in the marker pop-up message. You can add also other things, but it's the basic step you can do. So after doing all this code, this is the final result. Uh, it's a basic map page. Uh, as you can see, we have two markers one for the location of this conference, and another one for the location of the sprints with the pop-up opponent. OK, now we have reached the goal of adding a web map in a small Django project. In this case, the Django project was the, um, the blog app from the Django documentation. But what, what can we do when the project is bigger and maybe is already deployed in production? Let's see. So in our case, in 20 tab, the already deployed website was Mare de Mer. Sorry for my friends. Uh, it's an international real estate uh, website that advertises coastal properties close to the sea, both for sale and rental. So the website has been online since 2014, and it's translated in eight languages. At the moment, it contains almost 100,000 uh, active advertisements in about 40 countries, spread over six continents. This is the screenshot of the mobile version where we start working on the project. So its first version was developed by, with uh, Django 1.6, and it ran on Pyth Python 2.7. The data are stored on Postgres 9.3, and there was only one location field in the database. Uh, unfortunately, it's stored as a text field. 
leaflet.js 1.0 was used to show a static data and view only map. There is no user interaction at all. OK. That one is the screenshot of the mobile version after the introduction of the interactive map. It was developed with uh, Django 2.1, GeoDjango, and Python 3.6. The data is stored in Postgres 10, and the special data is stored in geography fields thanks to PostGIS 2.4. Leaflet.js 1.4 was used to allow users to display and interact with a dynamic map. Let's see some cool for our project. This is only an extract of two models of our project. So we have imported two fields from GeoDjango. In the city model, we used a multi-polygon field to store the borders data. And in the AD model, we referenced the city with a foreign key and added a point field to store our location. The real model have other fields, but it's not necessary to show there for our goal. So we, before, uh, we see before a um, basic approach, and, but in our project, we needed a more complex approach to serve the special data, because we have a lot of, um, of points and of a lot of coastal properties. So we decided to build a RESTful API with Django REST framework. Uh, as a done, we used Django REST framework's GIS for geographical support and Django filter for filtering support. After the installation, we needed to add them to the installed apps in setting. So the first step to build our API is to write a serializer. We inherited it from Gear your future model serializer. It's imported from Django REST framework JS. In order to define our serializer, uh, we had to specify the model. Sorry. The gear field in our model and the additional field we want to add in the final gear JSON result. So, and now we need to write the view. We imported the read-only model view set for Django REST framework, and also the serializer we wrote before. Our view set inherited from the first one, and in the query set we filtered all the ads with a location. The bound box filter and the filter backend allow us to filter the API using a bound box. But what's a bound box? In this case, a bound box is a, the, map, the map area. The, the, the bound box is an area defined by two latitudes and two longitudes. And it permits you to more, do more uh, requests when you move your map, because you are changing the latitude and longitude. Longitude. Okay, now the last step. After the view set definition, we imported the default Django REST framework router to register our mark marker path. So, as I said before, we will get data from the API and the path every time we will we will move our maps and leaflet um, are sending us the new bound box defined by your moving on the map. Okay, so at the end of this step, calling our API, you will receive our GeoJSON data. This is a very small extract of a GeoJSON with one point. You can see only its coordinates, its ID, and no additional properties. But in the real uh, project, you can see a lot of them, and you can add also a lot of properties to customize your pop-up in your map. OK, after the coding part, 
I'd like to show you a screencast of the interaction with the map uh, because the new version of the web site is not deployed yet. Let's see if it's work. Okay, it started. Okay, as you can see, we have a list of properties. Uh, we have cluster in the left on the map, and they are connected because they highlight when you move your cursor over it. At the same time, you can filter all your properties, and you can filter using different things like the type, like the distance from the cost. As, as you can see, the cluster are updating, also the number in the top of the list are updating, and the list itself. Everything is done with leaflet that are calling our API. So the list is still connected with our maps, and you can reset all all the filters, and you can hide it to use another approach. You can use our how to complete input. Let's start uh, at after the, the, the two characters you added. And you can change your location on the map. Uh, we, we went in Sardinia. As you can see, the list is updated. And also, this is the custom pop-up. You can also move your map or zooming out, and you are start seeing all the cluster showing up. That's it. OK. OK. Now I want to show you again this photo. It shows a typical building on the Abruzzo coast, and its name is Trabocco. I choose this photo because starting from a photo like that, I developed my interest in web mapping. And also because in our use case project, uh, our use case project was about coastal properties. But now let's summarize what I've shown you. So it's possible to have an out-of-the-box web map with GeoJango, PostGIS, and Leaflet.js. It's possible to execute a special query and relational query at the same time, as we saw in the, in the screencast. Your stack will be composed by Django and PostGIS only. And Thanks to this solution, we are able to implement also advanced features like backend clusterization, administrative levels, and dynamic special entity. Okay, I want to share with you all the resources uh, that I used to prepare this talk and to develop the web map. Whenever possible, we refer to the official documentation and we saw the documentation of all packages, Django, PostGIS, and Leaflet. And we also referred to the code repository itself. Now, some acknowledgments. I would to like to thank Mayra de Mer for trusting us to refactor and improve their website. I would to like 20 tab for giving me the opportunity to be here with you all. And by the way, they are looking for a Django developer, so you can apply using their email address. And at the end, you can use this QR code to visit the tag section of my website. You can find there the slides. The slides. They are already updated, uh, uploaded. You can find the code sample and all the resources URLs. And uh, I ask to you to add some comments or questions about this topic or about the talk itself.
Both the slides and the content on my website are released under Creative Commons license, so you can use it and share with everyone. Thank you. You can contact me on my website or on my Twitter account. Thank you so much. We have two minutes uh, for questions. That could be about. Uh, submit questions online at hashtag DjangoConQA and IRC you on the IRC uh, at uh, hash DjangoCon. Um, we can do, there we go, we got uh, one question. Sorry. Okay, um, uh, thanks for your talk. Uh, I just wanted to know, entering data, are you using exclusively Django Admin, or did you write your own uh, editor based on Leaflet.js? Because the Django Admin doesn't use internally Leaflet.js. Yeah, In our customer have a lot of sources for their data, so they have a lot of uh, importing commands that they use to uh, take the data from other customers. And I show you only the, uh, the admin uh, section because it's easy to fix some points. A lot of time customers uh, send uh, a misplaced points and uh, then the operator have to go there and fix it with a very exact point. But you can import your data in many ways, it's only um, a normal field, so you can import it like JSON, GSV, everything. Thank, Thank you so much. Thank you.